Hey everyone, welcome to Easy Nursing, the channel that's dedicated to bringing you NCLEX reviews, general nursing tips, and practice question videos. Today we're going to be talking about heart failure, and we're going to be doing a few practice questions. So let's dive into it. So a patient with congestive heart failure reports shortness of breath. So which of the following accidents should be taken first? Well, shortness of breath is kind of expected in CHF. What happens to these patients with heart failure, uh, with the congestive heart failure, leads to the holding on the fluids. So this can be held around the lungs, in which case they can have some pulmonary edema, and this will lead to shortness of breath, some peak tinge, sputum, um, and maybe some crackle sounds around the lungs. And they can get this edema also around their body, um, which could lead to peripheral edema. But this guy has shortness of breath. Which action should be taken first? So we can auscultate the lung sounds. Maybe we'll hear some crackles, make sure that's what's going on. We can assist the patient into a high fowler position. This is good, it'll help them to breathe better. We can check their oxygen saturations. This would be good to know if they need more oxygen, how bad is it going. Oh, and we can give them their scheduled mucinex, and this can help them if they have anything in their lungs that need to cough up, it's gonna help them cough it up. The main thing here is it's saying, what are the following actions? Now, there's two ways to think of priority questions. There is uh, the nursing process, ADPI, so you can assess first, which would be auscultating or check their oxygen saturations. But this is saying, which of the following actions should we take? And if this patient has shortness of breath, we need to maybe do something to help them with that. And so that's why instead of assessing first, we're going to do the ABCs here. We're going to do airway, and we're going to help them get into a high fowler position. So this is when you get one of those questions. You have to decide, okay, is this ADPI or ABC priorities? And it helps us out by saying actions. And the fact that there's two assessments that could both be perfectly good assessments, and there's only one action here besides the mucinex, one good airway breathing circulation, we're gonna go with B. And we'll see that for this particular question, that's the correct answer. All right, let's go to the next one. So a nurse is educating a patient with congestive heart failure that will be discharging. Uh, we're educating them on foods high in potassium. The nurse is likely educating them on this because of the side effect of which medication. So what this question is asking us is which of these medicines uh, puts the patient at risk for low potassium? So which which of these can lower the patient's potassium? So carvedilol, if you see LOL, that's a beta blocker, so that's for blood pressure. We got furosemide, this is known as Lasix. Um, this is a diuretic that helps the patient get rid of fluids. Um, it does so uh, by um, having the patient well, excrete fluids, and what happens is they end up excreting a lot of potassium. So that's going to be our telltale sign because Lasix can lure potassium. It's not a potassium sparing diuretic. So uh, when they're on furosemide, they need to be sure to eat lots of potassium. So we know this is the answer. Let's look at the others. Uh, prednisone. Okay, prednisone. This is a steroid, and this is going to help the patient open up their lungs um, by decreasing inflammation around the lungs. Abuterol. Uh, this is going to be an ural. This is a. Um, beta agonist, um, it's going to bronchodilator to open up the lungs. I told you carvedilol, I told you it just helps with blood pressure and helping the heart to beat correctly. The only one that's going to lower potassium here is furosemide. So for this question, furosemide is the correct answer. Okay, one more. So the nurse is assessing a patient admitted with congestive heart failure exacerbation. Um, so this means they're, they're having all their symptoms worse at this point, which is an expected finding. So what is expected of CHF is what it's asking us. Recent weight loss, that doesn't sound right. Uh, patients are gonna be holding on to fluids with congestive heart failure, so they're gonna be gaining weight. And that weight gain is why you do daily weights on these patients is because they can hold on the weight and hold on the fluids. So you wanna know, are they holding on the fluids? And you can tell just by weighing them every day in the hospital, hey, this patient may be needing more diuretics to get that excess fluid off. So it says a swollen red extremity that's warm to touch. Now these patients will be swollen, uh, or they can be, with the congestive heart failure because they're holding on the fluids, they're gonna have some peripheral edema. But this is talking about uh, one extremity that's red and warm to touch. That sounds more like cellulitis. And I'm gonna show you real quick a, p 
picture of what I'm talking about. This is cellulitis. Yes, it's going. They're probably going to be swollen like this. You can see the swelling around of the leg. Uh, but this right here, this is not normal. This is a cellulitis. See how it's red? Um, that that's an inf a skin infection or an infection of the, the subcutaneous tissue. Pink tinged sputum with a cough. Well, they may have excess fluid around their lungs and this will cause them to have some pink tinged sputum, uh, have a cough, shortness of breath. So that looks like the correct answer. What's the last one? Flank pain. Nothing here that would uh, be talking about flank pain. Um, that would be maybe more with like pyelonephritis, which is a kidney infection, which is you know, just you know, you got urinary tract infection just above that. When it hits your kidneys, you got pyelonephritis. So no reason here for what we're seeing to be have flank pain. So correct answer for this should be C. There we go. So that's my NCLEX practice question video uh, for CHF. I'll be making uh, more videos like this. If you like them, go ahead and subscribe to Easy Nursing. If you have any questions, please comment in the uh, comments below. Thanks.